Hello and welcome to St David's Church here in Tonrevel. We have a lot to get through today. It's the last Sunday before Lent, Transfiguration Sunday, and a couple of days, it's St David's Day. As you can see by right the way I'm dressed. Don't worry, I may be adopted Welsh, but I'm from Manchester and I will not be trying to pronounce too much Welsh. To start us off is the great Welsh revivalist hymn, Here is Love. And this version is by a collection of friends from all over Wales. So sit back and enjoy. As of course most of you will know, St David is the patron saint of Wales and the saint to which our church is dedicated. There are many and varied stories about the life of St David, 
and much is still taught about them in schools. If you were to ask anyone in Wales what they remember about St David's Day, whether they are four or a hundred, they would probably tell you about dressing up in Welsh costume and singing in the concert. Let's spend a moment in prayer. God our Father, you called your servant David to uphold the Christian faith amongst the people of Wales, to encourage them by his observance of fasting and obedience, and to show them compassion through small acts of great love. As light is poured onto the mountain tops and as fresh rain is sprinkled on the hills, help us to be good carers of one another and of your great and glorious creation. Amen. Grace and peace be with you and keep you in the love of Christ. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Welsh are a brilliant combination of opposites, as we hope this next film will show you. It's the Welsh National Anthem, sung in two very different ways. The first, very gently and beautifully. The second, also sang beautifully, but very tongue-in-cheek. for Transfiguration Sunday. Almighty Father, 
whose son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross. Give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Here is today's Gospel, and today it's read by Rob. And today's reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James, and went up on to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And the disciples kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly, a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It throws him into convulsions until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. This concludes our reading. Our next piece of music is called Transfiguration.
St. David is famous for saying, do the little things. God our Father knows the little and great things we do. He knows the good and the not so good things we do. Let us now confess when we've been unkind or not brought joy through the little things to those around us. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart and we have not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive us. Help us to amend our lives that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May God our Father, who by our Lord Jesus Christ has reconciled the world to himself and forgives the sins of all who truly repent, pardon and deliver us from all our sins and grant us the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join with us now to say the baptismal creed. Do you believe in God the Father, the Creator of all? I believe and trust in God the Father. Do you believe in his Son, Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world? I believe and trust in God the Son. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life? I believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. This week, June will lead us in prayer. Dear Lord, this week is one of those weeks when it almost feels like emotional overload. We thank you for always being there as that nurturing, supportive Father who will always see us through. As we embark on this roller coaster of a week, open our hearts as we can share with you and others our feelings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for the fulfillment of your word. The word became flesh and lived amongst us as they saw his glory, the glory of your one and only Son, full of grace and truth. We thank you for your divine power that was seen here on earth. It is because of this that we can now come together and celebrate you. We pray that we do not take your power for granted and that we truly understand your greatness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, whose compassion illuminates the world. Transform us into the likeness of the love of Christ that we may show compassion to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we approach St. David's Day, we pray for all the people of Wales and we remember St. David, your servant. We give thanks for his passion for the Gospels, which helped to spread Christianity. We give thanks for the purity and simplicity of his life. We give thanks for his gentleness and clear spiritual leadership. Help us to learn from him. Help us to be mindful of his last words. Be joyful, keep the faith, and do the little things that you have heard and seen me do. May we reflect this week that sometimes to do the little things for others may be all they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, May you share in our fun and delight of pancakes. Help us to enjoy this tradition of many centuries where we use up all the treats in life like eggs and milk and butter. Nowadays also lemon and sugar and so many other things. Let us reflect on Show of Tuesday and the meaning it has for people over the years. Traditionally, it was a time for self-reflection before the start of Lent. A time to look at our lives and see what changes we need to make. Support us, Lord, as we look on ourselves with honesty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Dear Lord, whenever I think about Ash Wednesday, it brings to my mind a gateway, a gateway that is imposing and quite frightening. The mark of the cross on my forehead feels like a huge weight, but I can't wash it off because it's so important. Maybe it's just me, but it feels a bit like someone stamped you to go into a club or a ticket you have for a show. In a way, I suppose it is. So Lord, be there and hold our hands as we push through that gateway and into Lent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Rob will now lead us in the Lord's Prayer in Welsh. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Ein tad, a hunnoit an anevoid, sanctadia de enu, dela de deinas, gwinele de rewellis, megis ar a nev, velli ar a dear hefyd, dero in i heddiw ein barra bainyddio, a madda in i ein dyledion, fel am y ddeo ninnau ein dyledwyr, ac nac arwain ni yn brofedigaeth, eith yr gwared ni rhag drwg, Canes iddo ti yr deinas, ar nerth, ar gygoniant, y mois hwysoedd. Amen. So what's happening this week? All of our on-site services are at the usual times. Zoom evening prayer is on Sundays and Wednesdays, 6.30pm. Contact us for a link if you'd like to join us. Please subscribe if you haven't already. That way you will be pinged when the new videos come out. It's really important to subscribe as we will have new YouTube shorts popping up right the way through Lent. On Tuesday, which is Rove Tuesday, Pancake Day, Charmaine and myself will be demonstrating our pancake making skills. Well, actually, she's really good. I've never made one. So join us and wish us luck. On Wednesday, we'll be starting our online Lent journey with a series of shorts starting with Ash Wednesday. Thanks to Rob, Charmaine and June for all that work they do to make these services possible. And most of all, to you, our virtual parish, for being with us today. So let's join together to say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our last film for today is Callan Lamb. You're all in our prayers. Do join us again next week. Goodbye.